Hi, my name is Sam Colon, and I am talking about the types of coaching styles. Uh, this is chapter three. Um, so we have three types of coaching styles. Um, we have the command style, the submissive style, and the cooperative style. Right now we're going to talk about the command style. On um, the command style, all the coaches make the decisions. Athletes listen and absorb and comply. Um, what that means is really that the coach doesn't want any input from the players, from his assistant coaches. Uh, he just wants to, he wants it his way and no other way. Um, and that's really a, the dominant model that um, the book discusses. Um, and later on we'll touch on some a great example of uh, Bobby Knight being a, truly the biggest command style coach that I think we've witnessed. Um, next is submissive style. Submissive style. Uh, coaches make very few decisions as, po as possible, little instruction. Um, it's similar to just the babysitting type of role. Um, a lot of these coaches just kind of sit back and watch the players play um, and let them do their own thing, figure it out. Um, they're almost there just to supervise them um, and be their quote unquote coach. Um, they're very laid back and uh, just let the team play it out. Um, and that sort of means just um, that if there's a mistake or if there's anything happening, uh, they're not really going to correct it. They're not going to make you know very little effort to uh, tell the player how they can correct this mistake. Um, the next one would be the cooperative style. This is the most popular style within all of the uh, coaches that I've seen that I've had. Um, and personally, this would probably be my style of coaching, um, although I would probably mix in a little bit more of a command as well. Um, but the cooperative style um, shares the decisions uh, making with the athletes as well as their coaching staff um, and balances the direct uh, balances everything out between all of them um, Different from the command style uh, The coach here in the cooperative style uh, likes to inform the inform the team uh, make them a part of their decisions uh, as well as You know if, if anything is to come up, uh, you know it it's a team effort um so examples of this would be um, in the command style, like I said, Bobby Knight uh, was a head basketball coach at the University of Indiana. Um, he is very known for this intense style of coaching. Um, and later on, I'm going to touch on uh, whether being a very tough coach and in this command style, is it pushing your team or is it bullying? There's a very fine line, uh, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but... Bobby Knight, uh, when he coached his teams, it was his way and nobody else's. So if you know a coach, if a player were to come to him and, and say that we should try to do this some something this way, that was not happening. There's no way that was happening with Bobby Knight. It was his way and his way only. And if you were gonna play on his team, you better play his way. And if not, you were off. Like there's there's no way. Um, and just to tell you how intense Bobby Knight was, he got a technical foul in a game. Uh, didn't like it, uh, then got proceeded to argue with the referee, got another technical foul, uh, didn't agree with that one as well. Um, so grabbed a bench chair, chucked it out into the court as the player's about to shoot the free throw, um, delaying the game and then causing his ejection. Um, that's just a little about Bobby Knight. He was, he was very intense and um, caused a lot of his players um, to leave the team, not only just because Mostly just because of his coaching style. He was very uh, disciplined and commanding, and a lot of players couldn't handle the way that he talked to them and yelled to them, at them. Um, some players, and we'll talk about this later, uh, some players like it when a coach yells at them, some players don't. So um, Bobby Knight was definitely the, a really good, and I think the best example that we can show for a command style of coach. Um, a submissive style, we all know this guy up here. Uh, this is Joel Cotton, the head basketball coach at Judson University. Um, when I think of a submissive coach, I extremely think of Joel Cotton. Um, he's very laid back, um, not only in just his coaching, but in his personality. Um, very quiet type of guy. Um, you will not strike a long conversation with him. Um, and you could tell in his coaching, that's, that's his personality. Uh, he doesn't make very much adjustments just because he sticks with his game plan and lets his players play it out. Um, he's... And you could tell when he's on the bench, he's really just sitting there watching the game unfold and makes very little adjustment to 
decision making as possible, which is uh, one of the characteristics of us, characteristics of a submissive coach. Um, lastly, the cooperative style example would be, in my favorite, uh, Joe Madden of the Chicago Cubs. Um, he's a very intentional type of person. Uh, he wants to create this bond with his players, with his staff, um, and coming to Chicago as a Cubs fan, he wants to create the band, the, the bond with his fans as well. Um, and this is something that really translates into the cooperative style of coaching. Um, it creates this connection, that level of trust, and when a big decision comes along, he can talk to his players, he can talk to his coaching staff, and they're all on the same page and they all want the same thing. Uh, this also gives players and the staff uh, a creative freedom on and off the field. Uh, for Joe Mann uh, and the Cubs, um, they're very uh, freeing off the field and on the field as well. Um, last year in a playoff race, after the, after the series, they, they, after the game, they wore their pajamas uh, on the plane, and that was a big thing, um, you know, just stuff like that. You know, they come in goofy costumes, all the rookies, or, you know, it's very loose, um, but very competitive as well. They create, he creates this very competitive atmosphere, but has fun at the same time. Uh, and that almost, to me, has a little bit of the command, but also the cooperative um, involvement uh, as well. Um, just And creative freedom. Uh, I mean, one of the most dramatic guys on the team would be Pedro Strop, a reliever, not in the game very often, but when he does get in the game, you know his, his, his style. He's got this swagger to him, and it uh, makes, him, makes him him. And a lot of sometimes coaches in the, in the command style would not like that. You have to set this one tone and you have to be this one type of person. Um, and not here in this cooperative style, not with Joe Madden. Um, that's, that's, he has this creative freedom for his players and his staff. And his staff. Um, so a little additional information that's outside from the book. Um, coaches are not only just seen as this coaching figure, there are, there are role models for uh, their athletes. Um, personally, my head baseball coach in high school um, became a very big role model for me. Um, he's don't know, almost like a father figure to me um, outside of my own dad. Um, but, you know, as role models, as coaches, we implement these things um, on the field and off the field, such as sportsmanship, appearance, you know, sound work ethic, appropriate language, have a high standard, positive attitude, healthy lifestyle, personal deportment, and academic attainment. Um, being a student athlete, uh, you need these things. The game goes beyond the field or the court. Um, and, and personally, uh, playing baseball and, and having some of these coaches that I've had really taught and really made me the person I am today. Um, just for example, you know, as sportsmanship and appearance, um, you don't only represent yourself when you put this uniform on. You represent your team, you represent your school. Um, at the same time, representing your family. Um, and anything you do off the field, say, uh, say you're a student athlete, anything you do off the field is a reputation of your coach. So uh, your coach being a role model is something that I see as very fitting, um, as a very fitting role for a coach. Um, I think that we, as a, as a coach, you'd spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of time with your players, you spend a lot of time on and off the field with your players. So you have this opportunity to set a high standard and show them these things of sportsmanship and appearance um, an appropriate language. Uh, for example, for me, I have a, I had a travel ball coach uh, and, and a man that was working at the facility uh, came up and asked if we uh, needed anything. And I, and I said, and quoting me, I said, no, it's okay, thanks, man. And my coach here overheard me say, thanks, man, and came up to me and said, you need to go find that, that worker and apologize and say and, and apologize for calling him man because he is a coach and and we respect everyone on the same level um, and that's something that has translated into life for me on that one moment that's just one moment that I've had um, and in going playing college ball now I you know it's yes ma'am yes sir and that's just how it is um, and I think that's just from the coaches that I've had and that they've implemented for me in my life uh, also psychology and coaching um, like I said earlier, Bobby Knight could not, he wouldn't change. He would not change. That was his philosophy. That was his style of coaching. So a lot of players, they couldn't figure out how, they couldn't figure out how they could 
you know, can they handle this? Can they not handle this? Um, were they a type of player that could handle being yelled at? Um, personally, I, I, I enjoy being yelled at. If you yell at me, that, that gets me in the zone a lot faster. Um, some players can't. They cannot handle that. And as, as, as excessive as Bobby Knight was, um, that's what kind of caused them to lose a lot of players. Um, but the ones that stuck around um, obviously had this winning mentality and, and really appreciated what Bobby Knight did and um, his sort of uh, his commanding coaching style. Um, again, that goes to being negative. Um, and, and there's a fine line of being negative and pushing your team. And um, back in the day, I would say that Bobby Knight was seen as a very good pusher of his team. Um, now, I would definitely say that um, just because of how things, how the world is now, that would be as, as bullying. Um, and I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's just how the world is now. Um, so, um, this is the question I have up there. Uh, when does bullying, uh, when does coaching become you know, bullying? Uh, and, and I think right now, um, I would say uh, personally that the when coaching becomes bullying is when the coach is really targeting one player only and really try, is really embarrassing him almost on purpose. Um, and, and there's a fine line. There's a very fine line between bullying and pushing your team. Um, but I think um, if a coach is bullying a player, it'd be extremely noticeable. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm sure other players would see it and, and bring it to the attention of the other coach or that coach if that relationship is there. So that is my presentation on the types of coaching styles. We have the submissive, the command, and the cooperative. And just remember that the uh, cooperative coaching style is the most popular. Um, and that is when, you know, you, you, that's the Joe Madden example. So.